let's get straight into it <laughs> hey my babies welcome back to my channel it's your girl raya j and i'm back with another video today is um it's monday night <laughs> Today is Monday, my babies. I hope all is well with you all. All is well with me. And I hope we all are continuing to stay about happiness, peace, and love. And I hope we all are continuing to stay determined, motivated, and focused. And I hope we all are continuing to walk in the alignment of stars that Allah has for us. Yay! So, yeah, I know I've been gone for like a week. Um... And to be quite frankly honest, this wasn't really my plan, you know, to be gone this long. Um, yeah, no, like when I was doing the previous content videos, I was telling y'all like, I'm back, your girl is back, blues they blues they blue. But unfortunately, um, you know, life happens and <laughs> I guess I wasn't back officially, you know, I don't know, you know what I'm saying, but... I'm back today and I'm going to be doing a very kind of different video, a very uh, different type of theme content video, um, you know, and also my period is literally about to come in a day or two. So I said, you know what, before I go on another hiatus, <laughs> because your girl is PMSing, let me just get a whole new video out before my period comes because y'all know how I can get when my period comes like I become very distant I don't want to record I don't want to work out like I don't want to do nothing like I'm just I'm not feeling it <laughs> you know so um I literally just decided right now like I came across this youtuber her name is Trinity she's this black youtube content creator and she's so dope and I don't know like from the time of me watching her video and me feeling her content i was like let me go record some content you know because i think my babies will want that like i'm literally about to be pushing like over a week without no content posted on a channel and i know that they're kind of feeling a little disappointed in me you know so let me just go ahead and post this content that i've been feeling i've been feeling like doing this this type of content video I've been feeling like the inspiration for it. I've been feeling um, the motivation to produce this content video for y'all on the channel. But I didn't know. I literally, I just didn't know how y'all would feel about this type of content. Um, because it is pretty deep. It is pretty dark, you know. And um, I don't know if y'all would really... Um, appreciate my efforts if y'all will appreciate this content I don't know if y'all will like this type of content because I know yeah I give you guys a lot of controversial um, topics I give you guys so many different type of topics you know and different type of content on the channel but I don't think I've ever spoke about this type of content so we're gonna just get right into it um i do have me some wine that i'm drinking <laughs> i'm probably gonna be like on my third or fourth cup <laughs> right now so i am very lit but i am um i am chasing it with some agua so don't worry i don't play about that like as long as i'm drinking as much water as I'm drinking at the same time you feel me so um don't worry about me I'm good I'm Gucci gray so I guess I will start but wait for those of you who cannot read and those of you who do not understand what type of content this is about this type of content video is basically me sharing all the type of um basically all the all of the type of like physical and spiritual abuse that I have experienced in my life you know and um you know y'all know my babies but if you are new here your girl is raya j and welcome to my channel and um don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with all the different type of content that your girl produces on this channel so um i want this hat to just like be perfect you know it's dope it's like a radical <laughs> i'm crazy but um, so 
Okay, for those of you who do not know, my mom, she died literally like a few days before I turned six years old. And she died from breast cancer. Um, and you know, it was very, me, I'm telling my experience, my life. And just all the all the memories that I have in my body, in my brain, in my in my in my being, you know. So I remember my mom taking care of me. You know, I, I remember I have a few memories of my mom taking care of me, loving me, being there for me before she got really really sick, and before she unfortunately before she died. You know from cancer breast cancer and um i don't remember my mom ever being physically abusive to me like i like oh i swear on my mother's grave right now y'all i don't remember my mom beating me doing any of those things like to me that would be in today's world abusive you know to your child um yeah she probably gotten upset upset with me when she told me not to do something as a child and i did it anyway but that's what children do <laughs> like children they want to test their parents they want to see like what can they get away with like you know if i can sneak behind mommy and daddy's back you know so um of course of course i'm not gonna say i've never disappointed my mom from the time that she was raising me before she died of course i did there was times where i told mom I, I there was times when my mom was like okay it's time to go to bed and i'm laying i'm literally laying in her bed with her and y'all when i was a kid i was so addicted to cheese that when she went to sleep i would sleep i would sneak out of her bed to go and sneak some cheese out of the refrigerator you feel me so <laughs> if she would catch me like I would come first of all I would come back and sneak into bed and I would be so tired because I'm already sneaking out of the bed in the middle of the night you know and um I would eat a little bit of cheese and then I would put the rest of it under my pillow so when I wake up obviously my pillow is stinking it's melted cheese under my pillow my mother would be pissed Raya I told you stop sneaking in that refrigerator what are you doing <laughs> you know you can't be putting cheese under your pillow that's disgusting it's gonna be hot melted cheese stop sneaking under in that refrigerator for cheese you can get cheese tomorrow when you wake up why are you sneaking when i go to sleep to get cheese but y'all i literally i was just the kid that was so addicted to cheese but um so yeah i, I just don't remember my mom being physically abusive to me as a kid So I remember my mom passing away and I remember um, I went to go live with my aunt which was my my mother's younger sister because my mom was the oldest she was the oldest of three kids um, my grandmother my grandmother actually had five kids but two two um, of her children actually died in a house fire which were, were which would have been my two my two twin uncles they died they was the babies you know they was younger than my uncle my own they was younger than my uncle um so yeah they died in a terrible house fire um so yeah once they died it was just my mom my aunt and my uncle that made it out of the house fire so you know so i just grew up knowing knowing that my mom had two siblings which was her younger sister and her younger brother which would be my aunt and my uncle so when my mom died it, it was a whole it was a whole lot of like custody battles and all of that because you know people was fighting like oh jerry said she wanted me to raise the kids no jerry said she wanted me that was my mother's my, my mother's born name was geraldine no maurice but her like, like the name people would call her would be jerry you know so um everybody was like oh no jerry says she wanted me to raise the kids and my uncle's like no jerry says she wanted me to raise the kids and my aunt was like no jerry says she wanted me to raise the kids so basically um me and my sister was old enough to where well i wasn't really old enough i'll be i was only six years old so obviously i wasn't old enough i don't think you're old enough to pick what parent you want to live with unless you're like 13 so um my sister was able to pick 
who she wanted to live with. She picked my uncle as soon as my mother died. I was a kid, so my mother said to my sis to her sister, which would be my aunt, her her little sister, listen, make sure y'all look out for my kids. I don't want my kids to go into the system. She she did not want her, her kids to go to the foster system. So um, you know, my sister knew, like her, I mean her sister knew, which would be my aunt, listen, you need to get off drugs, you need to do everything you need to do, because as your older sister, I don't want my kids to go to the foster system. I want you to take care, take care of my kids, you know? So my aunt did what she needed to do and lo and behold, me and my baby brother was living with her. So she had a boyfriend at the time and I remember, I don't remember us getting spanked. I don't remember us getting spanked when she had this put spit damn i can't even talk i don't remember us getting like whoopings when she had this boyfriend when we was living this when when when, when we were living at this uh particular location which would be in staten island i don't remember us getting whoopings you know because her boyfriend also had his kid he had three sons so we basically all was like a blended family, you know, his three sons and then um, me me and my brother, which were her niece and nephew. So we all was like a blended family, you know. I don't remember us getting whoopings in that house, but you know, maybe I was just too young to remember. But eventually, um, my aunt, because my aunt, she was on drugs. She was on drugs and I was so young, I didn't even know all of this, you know. She was on crack, she was on coke, she was on so many different type of drugs. And, um, you know, I didn't know because I was young and the parents, you know, her and my quote unquote uncle, which was her boyfriend, they did a big, they basically hit it very well, you know, y'all. So I didn't know. I was I was just a kid. So um I do remember though that they let one of their friends move into the house because the house we was living in y'all was really big. It was a three-story house. It was the basement, the first floor and the second floor and um we had the first floor and the first floor was big. It was like three, four bedrooms, two bathrooms. So we, we kept up the whole uh, um, second floor and people lived in the basement. And then when they moved, I think people lived on the second floor too. But when my aunt and uncle moved in these people, which was their friends, um, they moved these people in and... <sighs> man fast forward just one day it was some it was some trauma you know i don't know if she didn't pay the rent i don't know if she owed them drugs i really i don't know what happened i was just a kid but all i do know is that y'all a fight broke out and everybody started fighting in the house and um man it was crazy like the adults was fighting the kids was fighting. I was just a kid, you know. But you know, as a kid, though, like, if you see your family fighting and you feel like, you know, you could do something or you even feel like you want to do something, you want to help your family, you're going to do that, you know. So I jumped in. I started h hitting that bitch in the head, you know. I even picked up some glass and started banging it on that bitch head. Like, y'all, it was a crazy, like, it was a crazy war in that house like it was like family versus family you know and she had two sons and then you, you already know like it was um my aunt's boyfriends he had my, my aunt's boyfriend had three sons and then it was me and my sister and my little brother it was crazy y'all i'm sorry for the lighting i know it's going in and out y'all i don't know how to like adjust that i gotta work on that but y'all just don't click out the video just yet so um long story short she moved out we were still there um but but we, like my family wasn't the landlord of that house you know so eventually both families got kicked out of that um that house you know that family we was fighting with and the family that we was with everybody got kicked out except for the people in the um except for the people in the basement and the second floor because 
no we wasn't fighting with nobody else it was literally family against family because we moved them into our space on the first floor so um y'all it was it was crazy so i remember us moving back to brooklyn because that was in staten island that was literally off of new brighton i remember the address it was 84 hendrix <laughs> shout out to the people in staten island shout out to the people that live on hendrix street like shout out to y'all because shit was lit <laughs> when my family was living at on 84 hendrix so um i remember we got kicked out and we had to move back to Brooklyn now originally my family is from Brooklyn my family is from Brooklyn my like the apartment that we moved to was the apartment that my grandmother had and before even before that um, our family lived in that apartment so basically the apartment in Brooklyn is the main apartment that most of my family lived in and we basically just passed it on to each family members so um we moved back to that apartment but it wasn't peaches and cream when we moved back like because my uncle was in that apartment with him his wife and his daughter so when we moved back it was this whole novella like it was this whole drama um of basically my mother's brother and my mother's sister which is my aunt and uncle fighting of who's gonna keep the apartment who's supposed to live there it was crazy so basically my aunt and her boyfriend won the um the disagreement and we all moved into the apartment they moved out i don't know where my uncle and his girlfriend and his and his daughter went but um we ended up winning the disagreement so we moved in everything was good but i just remember over time like i, I just remember over time getting disciplined it's sad that i like I correlate this apartment in Brooklyn with most of the abuse that I've went through in my life. You know, like I remember one day my aunt, I remember my aunt going out, hanging with her friends. And, um, you know, we was kind of of age, you know, we wasn't 13 to so the point where you can live your, leave your kids at home, but we was at least 10, 11, you know and we done seen things we done heard things in the house so we was very aware of things of adult activity you know um and remember i told y'all that my not not only was it me and my brother in the apartment it was also my aunt's my aunt's boyfriend's kids as well and he had all boys so we all basically we was all raised together as cousins you know so um my nose is running <laughs> so um i just remember one night i just remember one night i think it was new year's and my aunt went out with my god sister and she was like oh we going out we'll be back later lock the door if anything just call me y'all got my number but you know me and my my quote-unquote cousins which was you know my aunt's boyfriend's kids we knew we wasn't really cousins you know kids know the fucking truth <laughs> you know what i'm saying so we knew we wasn't really family but of course when the when when they was both around my aunt and my uncle um we know to have to have respect and we know to act accordingly so when they left we actually used to do um we actually used to do like adult things you know uh, we used to like play with each other we used to like well what we thought we used to like <laughs> we thought we was giving each other oral sex and we thought we was actually having sex but we what we was kids y'all we was 10 we was 11 we didn't know what we was doing so one day when she went out that night for new year's when she went out that night for new year's she came back a little earlier than expected you know and she didn't call to say she was coming back normally she would call like hey raya i'm on the way back home all right so just open, keep the door open so i don't gotta bother you i know y'all sleeping you know whatever the fuck so um she didn't call this night normally she would call so that would give us kind of like a heads up 
and um she she walked in and me and my quote unquote cousin which was not really my cousin you know um it was my aunt's boyfriend's kid <laughs> kid it was only one of them that this happened with you know because we was around the same age um and you know me and him were kind of we were kind of being sexual you know we we thought we was doing something real but we wasn't you know literally his penis was only between my lips but it wasn't actually inserting my vagina you know but when she came in it looked it how it looked it and um she was furious what the fuck are y'all doing blah 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 uh-uh yeah, I know I don't tolerate none of this shit. I don't I told y'all about this shit because we kind of been caught prior to that time, but it wasn't it it, it wasn't as real as it was this night, you know? Um so we didn't really get in much trouble. But this night it looked it really like, "Oh, y'all mother y'all mother effers are really intimate in my house." You know, okay. So again, I told y'all my aunt was on a lot of drugs back in the day. She was on crack, she was on coke. She used to drink Hennessy, smoke cigarettes, um, and I didn't know because y'all know I was only what 10, 11 years old. I didn't know all of that, but now I'm a grown woman, and um, it's very clear to me that she was on a lot of drugs. Um, so yeah, y'all, y'all won't believe what she made us do. She was like, "Oh, well, y'all want to be acting like y'all grown, having sex in my mother effing house? Okay, so y'all gonna show me." what it is to have sex, you know and um she literally you know i was trying to like you know of course if if you're a kid right and somebody buses in the room your parents or whatever they buses in the room and catches you you immediately jump up you know you try to act like everything is fine and we tried to me and him my quote-unquote cousin but that's not really my blood cousin um but she caught us right there dead in the act and um or what she thought was the act because we was never it was never really i didn't lose my virginity until i was 14 <laughs> you know so me being 10 11 years old how could i have possibly lose my virginity if the penis never really went in you see what i'm saying so um I don't know y'all but she um she was like okay y'all wanna be grown y'all wanna be children acting like y'all are grown y'all gonna show me what y'all was doing yes i know this sounds so sickening i'm sorry for y'all who feel triggered and who may feel disturbed at this very moment but this is what she did my aunt being on whatever she was on this night she decided to make us reenact what we was doing when she caught us in a moment and um she was like, yeah, you lay back down, put your pants back off, and you put your pants... I'm sorry, I'm back, y'all. The camera cut off. So she was like, yeah, let's go. You know, show me what y'all was doing. So we literally got back in the positions that we was in. Um, I, I was like literally like laying, laying down on the bed. And I took my pants off. He took his pants off. And we was literally doing the same thing that we was doing. And she literally was telling him, like, okay, let's go. Do what y'all was doing. And he started, like, thrusting. But obviously his his penis was not in me because we was we didn't even know what we was doing. We was literally kids. We, we thought we knew what we was doing. But we wasn't really doing nothing because when i turned 14 and i actually did something that's that's when i literally lost my virginity so when i was 10 and 11 i didn't really lose my virgin my virginity you see what i'm saying so i don't know but she made us reenact the whole scene it was very traumatic for me i mean i was crying i was like please no i don't want to do this like oh my god why are you making us do this and she was like no y'all motherfuckers want to be grown so let's go show me what y'all was doing y'all want to be grown having sex in my house let's go and um you know so we had to like basically reenact the scene of course, though, we wasn't really having sex because if we were, I would have lost my virginity at that time. But I didn't because I didn't officially lose my virginity until I was 14. So, um, yeah, that was crazy. But, um, I'm sorry, y'all. So, um, some other things that happened in my childhood was, um, 
me like being on punishment a lot you know because i wasn't coming home at the right curfew time you know I, or i was being disrespectful so i used to get i used to get my butt whooped with belts with hands um <laughs> with hangers i mean it was crazy and even at times like because at times i used to literally like handle the beating so well that i wouldn't even cry i wouldn't even cry i would just give like the deaf stare to my aunt so she would feel like oh bitch you think you're strong you think you're taking it okay so she would tell her boyfriend to hit me as well you know and then he would hit me and then i would cry because obviously a woman and a man's strength is two different type of strengths you know so then I would cry and I would be looking at him and I would look at him in his eyes and I would literally know that he didn't really want to do that. He's just doing that because he loves her and he's listening to her and he's and she's telling him what to do. But deep down inside, he loved like all my all my aunt's boyfriends loved me so much because I was baby girl. I was the I was the daughter that they never they they never had in their life, you know. So they used to treat me like their daughters, you know, they never wanted to hit me. Even if I would come home late on curfew, they would never um, agree with the curfew, you know, with the punishment that she would set for me. Like, oh, you can't go out this weekend. You can't go to parties. They said it a third. They would be like, come on, ma. You know, she's a kid. She made a mistake. Like, give her one more chance. You know, they literally will always be on my side. And she hated that because these was her men, you know. And none of her men never, never on my mother's grave, never sexually abused me. And I'm grateful for that because, you know, I, I hear a lot of stories of girls, you know, young girls saying like, oh, their own father touched them or their stepfather touched them, their uncle their their stepbrothers and their mother's boyfriends i you you would oh my god inshallah you would literally be surprised how many stories i come across on youtube because i watch youtube too yes i am youtube and i am ryan J, but i do watch other people's channels as well and i watch other people's um videos you know and so many young women tell their story about how they were sexually abused by people that they know and i'm just so blessed that all the men that I've been raised around and raised by never they never sexually abuse me you know and I'm just so grateful for that so um you know I just wanted to share that <laughs> you know they all tried their best to raise me as their own daughter but due to my my aunts you know controlling and abusive and emotional emotionally and mentally abusive um behavior they had no choice but to um agree with her punishments you know sometimes um but yeah i'm just great shout out to them man. i wish that i could shout their names out but i can't you know due to privacy due to privacy concerns and reasons and stuff like that i don't want the day that I become so big, I don't want nobody to sue me or anything like that. But just know, like, I know who y'all are and y'all never disrespected me. Y'all may have made bad decisions because y'all was influenced by my aunt. But at the end of the day, I know if it was solely up to you, y'all would have never made any any bad decisions in regards to me because y'all really loved me and respect me as a young woman as who I was you know um so yeah it was it was just crazy so yeah that's the things that I went through when I was living with my aunt you know I I went through a lot of physical abuse being hit with a belt being on a lot of punishments because I was disobeying curfew um being hit with the hand you know i was literally smacked one day like i went to the beach with my my best friend's family and um my aunt told me before i went to the beach she told me you better not take off because i had on my bathing suit right and then she told me you better not take off your white shirt i had a white shirt on top of myself you know because when i was young i started to 
I started to, what's the word, like fluctuate, you know, I started to grant gain breast, I started to get a little butt, you know, so I started to become a little curvy, you know, so she told me, you better not take off that shirt, and I'm going to be watching you, you know, so I, I thought, I'm like, how are you going to be watching me, you know, so I went to the, I, I literally believed her though, I knew that she was watching me, but when I did go to the beach, my friends, grandmother because she, my, my, one of my best friends growing up she was raised by her grandmother and um when i got to the when we all got to the beach you know everybody's taking off their skirts their dresses their shirts and they're going they're putting on their sun tanning lotion they're going into the water i was the only one i still kept on my white shirt you know because i was afraid you know i didn't want to get in trouble you know so um I had on my white shirt on top of my bathing suit and my fr my best friend's grandmother, she was like, Raya, why you got on that shirt? It's 90 something degrees out here, girl, take that shirt off. And I walked right up to her and I was like, I'm miss, I can't take off my shirt. My aunt told me if she take off, if I take off my shirt, I'm going to get in really bad trouble. She was like, girl, don't worry about it. If I take, if you take off that shirt, I'm going to tell your aunt that it's okay. I told you to take off that shirt and I believed her. You know, so I took off the shirt and I had a good old day at the beach. When I got home, my aunt smacked the shit out of me. Boom. Didn't I tell you don't take off that shirt? You think you're cute, you think you're grown, you don't listen, now you're gonna be on punishment. <laughs> I swear to a law, this is what happened. And um I'm sorry y'all. I'm hearing noises. I don't know if it's because I'm like lit or it's my neighbor. I don't know. I'm trying to be funny. I don't know. But, um, so yeah, that happened one time. Um, what else happened? When I was living with my uncle in Staten Island, my uncle, he never, he never put his hands on me because that was never really his intention. Um, my, my uncle was the type of guardian as to where he take things away from you to uh, really strike a nerve and to really get you to feel like the wrath of his punishment. So he used to, you know, he knew that I had so many friends in Brooklyn, but I was now living with him in Staten Island. So um, when I used to get in trouble or whatever, he used to be like, all right, now you can't get on the computer. Or he used to be like, now you can't get no ice cream. You know, he used to do things like that, but he was never physically abusive to me. So shout out to him <laughs> because he could have, you know, my mother was dead. My father wasn't in my life, you know, so who really was going to tell him anything? But he didn't. He didn't. He chose to do things, I would say, the right way. You know, and I do want you all to know. I know I didn't say this at the beginning of the video. But I do want you all to know that I do not stand for abuse of children. I do not stand for abuse of children um, in any way. So I do got to say this in this video uh, for any of you. I, I just don't want y'all to take this video any like the wrong way you know i do not stand for um parents or um older siblings or older guardians grandparents or whatever i don't stand for abusive parents and or guardians so i just want to say that um there was times where like i said my aunt she was on a lot of drugs she was going through a lot in her own life and I think she believes that she was doing the best that she could do in her life but there's certain things that I do remember um, in my childhood like I remember kneeling down on rice <laughs> oh my god this is so crazy yep I remember kneeling down she literally put rice on the floor and um she told me to kneel down on the rice and i had to keep my hands up so basically my knees i'm literally kneeling and my knees are on the rice i'm kneeling down on the rice and she told me to keep my hands like this and um every time you know because after sitting like this for a while and keeping your knees down in rice <laughs> you get tired you know so my 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 arms would literally fall down 
and then she would hit me boom pick your hand pick your hands up you know I didn't tell you to put your hand down so I would put my hands up again they would get tired she would hit me again boom and by the time I got up I had webs on my arms my knees i had i had rice prints on my knees for nailing on the rice down for nailing on the rice for so long it was crazy y'all it was crazy i even remember like some she was like a family friend quote unquote i remember her doing my hair for my fifth grade prom you know my aunt literally trusted her to do my hair for my fifth grade prom and in the middle of her doing my prom like most of my hair was done but she was now she was now um doing my bang and i remember her literally dropping like the hot comb on my forehead she burnt the shit out of my out of my forehead y'all on my fifth grade prom night and it was so bad to wear she couldn't even finish the original style that we had planned for my hairstyle she had to give me a bang and cover up the burn spot because she burned my fucking forehead and thank god like thank god <laughs> thank god it like healed and went away you know to where i don't have to be insecure about my own forehead but she did that shit on purpose Ain't no way you're dropping a hot comb on somebody's forehead or the curling iron. I don't remember what it is because I was so young. But I just know she burned my forehead. But ain't no way you burning, you burning somebody's forehead by mistake. Ain't no way. First of all, I don't, I don't even do hair. <laughs> but if I did, I know that if I would be doing somebody's front piece of their hair or their bang or whatever that I was doing... I would be extra, extra careful, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the front of somebody, yo, somebody's face and somebody's forehead, you're not gonna play with their fucking face and their forehead, you know? So, <laughs> yo, yo, and still to this day, I don't fuck with that bitch. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all that right now, like, I don't fuck with that bitch. I don't fuck with that bitch because she knew what she was doing, you know, and yo, I made my previous content video, I spoke to y'all about a lot of deep shit and you know, I always talk to y'all about a lot of deep stuff and I, I don't really think y'all be hearing me sometimes like from the time that I was pregnant in my mother's womb, from the time that I was born as a little seed. From the time that I was a little girl, from the time that I was being raised by my own family when my mother died, all of this, my own fucking family, my own family been jealous of me. My own. Hold on, y'all. All right. I'm back. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know. I was hearing some weird voice, some weird sounds. So I had to go check it out. But it's just my neighbors and their dogs and them, you know, opening their apartment doors and they're just making hella noises. But yeah, let's just finish up this video. So I think I was saying, just from the point, <laughs> just from the point that I've been like literally in my mother's belly. I've been a little seed. I've been growing up as a little girl. Um, people were jealous of me, you know. And, you know, now that I've grown up to be a grown A woman, it's not until now that I actually realize what's been going on, you know, within my life. So, um, I don't know. I think I've included everything, though. Been hit by the bell, been hit by the hand, kneeling on rice. Oh, did I tell y'all too that um, when my mom died, right, my, because my sister, she was already like 15, 16 years old. I was just turning, I was just turning um, six years old. My brother was one years old. And, um, 
it's crazy because my mom died and we was living with my aunt in my old family's apartment in Brooklyn and um, you know me and my sister were girls so of course we shared the same bedroom and um, we shared the same bed and my sister man when my mother got pregnant with me my sister was so jealous of me like you know because she always wanted to be the only child she couldn't understand when my mother got pregnant with me um, nine years later after having her she just couldn't understand it after being the only child for so long so um you know when my mom died we was all in the apartment and obviously me and my sister we were sharing the same room the same bed and every night in the middle of the night my sister used to kick me out of the bed literally and, and when I, I don't want you to take that lightly when I tell you that like I want you to really hear what I'm telling y'all she used to kick me out of the bed with all of her might because I used to hear her like in the middle of me sleeping I used to hear her saying like Raya get your hands off me get your feet off me you know because I used to be sort of a really wild sleeper you know but I'm asleep so I don't really know what's going on you know and when I tell you she used to kick me out of the bed she used to be like bang, bang, like kick me kick me out of the bed y'all like legit and um every night I used to Every time she, I used to hit the floor because she kicked me out of the bed so hard, I used to be screaming, crying. Ah, why did you kick me out the bed? And obviously, by me screaming and me yelling, um, we would wake up my aunt, you know, and she used to come into the room and she used to be like, why are y'all screaming? Why are y'all yelling? What's going on? Y'all waking me up out of my sleep. And I used to tell her, she kicked me off the bed. She kicked me off the bed. I didn't even do nothing to her. And she used to be like, why the fuck you keep kicking your sister off the bed? You know she's a wild sleeper. Cut this shit out. Y'all do this shit every night. You know, and um, it didn't stop though. But I'll tell you, one of the best days of my life in my childhood was when she finally got pregnant. My sister got pregnant at 18 or 19 years old with her first child, which would be my nephew, and um, she moved out of my aunt's house, you know, and um, I finally had my own, my own room for a little bit, you know, so she moved out, and she went to live with her baby daddy's mother's house, you know, she just went to live with his side of the family, and um, it was literally like one of the best days of my life, <laughs> because I no longer had nobody kicking me out the bed, you know, physically abusing me. I was what, what was supposed to be my older sister and somebody who loved me was somebody who was kicking me out of the bed and even when I was younger like I have memories of her um like telling me like when my mom was alive I have memories of her I was two or three years old I have memories in my freaking head of her telling my mom like oh my I'm gonna take Raya out to um, teach her how to learn how to ride a bike and she would get me outside and saying, like, okay, I'm going to teach you how to ride a bike. And I would start pedaling. Two years old. Two, two years old. Two and a half years old. I would start pedaling on the bike. And then in the middle of her holding onto the bike and telling me, you're doing good. You're riding the bike. You're doing good. She would let the bike go. And I would just literally crash. You know, I'm two years old. I don't know how to ride a bike. <laughs> so um, she literally would let the bike go. And I would crash, you know, and that was the start of me getting all of the scars that I do have on my legs because she thought she was teaching me how to ride a bike as an older sister, but she wasn't. She was literally just, like, when I think about it now, like, first of all, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of a little girl. I would never just put my two-year-old on a bike and just start her pedaling and then let the bike go. Like, what? That's not teaching your kid how to ride a bike, you know? It, that... When you let go of the bike and you let go of the handle of the bike, that means that you have seen, you are experiencing your child experience a bit of control, you know, so therefore you feel comfortable then letting go of the control of the bike. But no, she didn't do that with me. She didn't care if I was in control or not. You know, if I learned how to be in control or not, she just let it go. Like, okay, I'm going to let you go. Boom, I used to bust my ass, you know, so I don't know, y'all. It's a, lot of, it's a lot more things that I could tell y'all, but I don't want to make this video too long. Um, this video is not to shun any one of my family members, but this video is just to share my life, my experience, you know, and the things that I've gone through and the things that I've seen and experienced. I mean, you know, that's all I ever do when I come on my channel. I tell my truth. I hope nobody is, a, is, is offended by my truth. And if you are, hey, that's, that's on you, you know, that wasn't my intention. But yeah, I am going to go, though, because it is getting fairly late here. 
where I am <laughs> at, at the time that I started recording this video and where we are now. It is getting really late and I have to wake up tomorrow and work out. Um, but yeah, I love you all so much, my babies. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all on my next video. Peace and love. Bye!